much waiting and months on back order, my core mini watercolor set has finally arrived. Now you guys might remember when I put my core two watercolors into a homemade palette. And that is because I typically prefer to work from half pans rather than from tubes. It's just easier for me. So I love core watercolors. And when Golden announced that they were doing a set of watercolors specifically designed for half pan use, I knew I had to try them. And these things have been back ordered forever. If you're not a somebody on YouTube, good luck getting them. Although it seems like the wait is over and they are no longer on back order on the Dick Blick website. So I got these for $59.99 on Blick and you can find a link in the description below. There are 12 half pans inside this beautiful little box and the colors inside are cadmium yellow primrose, nickel azo yellow, transparent pyrrole orange, pyrrole red medium, quinacridone magenta, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue green shade, sap green, transparent brown oxide, burnt umber natural, and Payne's gray. And I think, I don't have every single one of these colors in this set, but I do have a lot of those colors, like the magenta, the Quinn magenta, dioxazine purple, um, I don't think, I think that's an Indian yellow. And I know this is burnt umber, but there are a lot of, oh, and this is ultramarine blue and this is phthalo blue green shade. So I think I have a lot of coral colors. I don't have the sap green. I think I have a Viridian green instead, but it's enough for us to kind of compare how coral watercolors from tubes and allowed to dry compared to the formulated to be used as half pan core watercolors. It's enough for us to be able to compare the two and for you to decide if you need both types of palettes in your life. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of light reading. It has a brush out chart, which basically means they include a palette map, which I really like. It means I don't have to cut one out. Three non-staining silicone wells. So that's gonna be a new one for me. Let's see. And then our colors on the back. This product contains a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer. Cadmium yellow primrose, nickel azo yellow, burnt umber, and Payne's gray. Warning, do not spray apply. This product contains cadmium, a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer by means of inhalation, not for use by children. And you can find out more information at Core Colors. And these are manufactured by gold, manufactured by Golden. Golden also makes acrylics. So the box itself is pretty neat. Let's go ahead though and get a look at this palette. And this is my first time. I've been avoiding all the spoilers on YouTube, patiently waiting for my palette to arrive. So my core mini palette comes in this really adorable mini core box. Now I have the really old large box. And then I have the slightly smaller individual set box that is squirreled away somewhere and I'm not gonna go digging for it. So it is like a miniature version of the existing core boxes. So it's really cute and it fits their branding. The latch is a little bit tighter and has all these mini wells up here. It has an informational booklet. Core Modern Watercolors. Deep, rich, beautiful color. Core's exclusive binder gives color greater intensity and clarity while retaining the best qualities of traditional watercolors. Core offers a strength, range, and versatility unmatched in the history of watercolors. Why do they gotta do that? They know when they do this. It means I gotta like go swatch all my favorite watercolors to compare them to these. Core, why you gotta do this? Actually, uh, you guys can go check out my M. Graham's review. I did a huge swath of swatch a thon including the colors in this set although i have not done this set yet that counts right guys that counts all right and then these are the beautiful colors available in the core range and these half pans there's no mention of whether or not you can order refills and there's no mention of whether or not you can order more so this kind of seems like these are the only the only half pans are gonna do. So here is our color card. 
and there is a piece of vellum. And then our beautiful, shiny, glossy, oh, isn't that neat look? It really is like a piece of silicone in there. I mean, you can't remove it, unfortunately. In fact, the whole interior seems to be a silicone sleeve. Right. See if I can get this out without breaking it. It would be nice if you could, because then you could kind of clean up your palette. It doesn't seem like it's meant to come out. Let me see if I can get any of these pans out. They are, what's neat is this really wedges them in tight. So they're not slipping, they're not going anywhere. You might need to use a tool to help you. Okay, all right. I'll just have to try that on my own time off camera later. So to refresh, Cadmium Yellow Primrose, Nickel Azo Yellow, and the mass tone of that is so dark you would not guess that was a yellow. Transparent Pyrrole Orange, Pyrrole Red Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, Dioxazine Purple, Ultramarine Blue, unless they've like switched some of these around, which they may have. We're gonna find out when we swatch. Um, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Sap Green, Transparent Brown Oxide, Burnt Umber Natural, and Payne's Gray. So there's actually no black in the set, but what's really neat is we get a lot of high chroma colors. So you could paint some really vivid things with this set. And then they have A, B, C, D, etc. So this is a really interesting little palette. It's different from what I have seen in the past. And then here is our map and it doesn't exactly correspond to our palette. I, I do prefer it when they directly correspond just because it's easier for me to make the mental translation. So I think I'm about ready to go ahead and start at least mapping out my map. Okay, so I have decided how I'm going to approach this because I do want to do a little comparison swatch. So we're going to fill out the swatch card first and then we're going to move on over to the head to head challenge. I'll zoom out, have a nice large sheet of Lacrell Kenson Heritage. So this is a cotton rags watercolor paper. On one side, I'm going to do the core mini. On the other side, I'm going to do the colors in my self-assembled set um, and try to do one-to-one -one as much as possible. And we will see how they compare. So let's go ahead and get started with filling out our little color map. My initial swatch thoughts are, these are gorgeous, you guys. They are so quick to activate. There's pretty much no pre-activation needed. Um, the colors are beautiful, clear, and vibrant. Everything that you already love about Core, um, you're gonna find here in the Core mini set. The colors move very freely. Um, they're very transparent, as is true with the core tube paints. Um, this uses Aquazole as one of their binders, so your blues are just really, really true blues. There's no hint of yellow from, say, Gum Arabic. They're just, they're just really beautiful colors. Um, for those of us who might be more used to painting with mud, they may take a little getting used to because they're very intense full pigment colors. I mean, there's a lot of color here in very little effort. So you may have to modify your painting style just a little bit, but this also means a little bit because a really, really long way. So, and also to be quite honest, um, $60 for 12 watercolors when they're high quality watercolor isn't a bad deal at all. I would only, at this point, my only change would be, I would really like to see them offer refills for these because I can definitely see people falling in love. Now you might be able to refill them 
from the tubes. And we're gonna find out in a couple minutes just how comparable dried core tube watercolors and these half pans are. All right, guys, I'm going to put this aside to finish drying fully, but you can see how beautiful these colors are. And y'all saw how little work it took to get them activated. We are now going to do the swatch off. That's not, I need like, nice drum roll, please. Someone in the audience, throw me a drum roll. All right, so we are going to start with the core mini palette. pull out a little bit and then after that has had a chance to dry we're going to switch over to the homemade core mini palette and see how they stack up I'm going to let these dry, but I do have one caveat. I already am in love with this set and I work fairly small, but if you work large, I would love to see Core release a similar range. And maybe this will work for those of you who work large because working large kind of justifies working from tubes. You will actually use the paint you've squeezed out. But I know there are people who do like using pans and half pans uh, for their larger pieces rather than working from tubes. And I would love to see Core also release some whole pans. This set is so tiny, it's so compact, it could almost fit in a woman's jeans pocket. But there's a lot of, it's very easy to overlap your colors, to muddy your colors, to mix your colors unintentionally. And that is my only complaint so far. Otherwise, it is gorgeous. All right, friends, so these have had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and go over the colors with you guys. We have Cadmium Yellow Primrose, Nickel Azo Yellow, Transparent Pyro Orange, Pyro Red Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, Dioxazine Purple, Ultramarine Blue, Phthalo Blue Green Shade, Sap Green, Transparent Brown Oxide, Burnt Umber Natural, and Payne's Gray. And then I did a little blended swatch here. So it's time to compare against the From Tube Core watercolors. In this homemade set made using a Hanbei palette and inexpensive half pans I got off of Amazon, I have just kind of a mixture of some of my favorite colors from um, Core's tube lineup. Now I would have to double check against my own videos, but I am fairly sure this is um, Azo Yellow. This is definitely, this is Quinacridone Red. So we're skipping Quinacridone Red. This is Pyro Orange. This is Quin Magenta Dioxazine Purple. Ah, uh, let's see. This is Ultramarine. This might not be Thalo Blue Shade. This might be, I'm gonna have to double check. And this is Viridian Green. So I'm going to try and get it as close as I can, but it's not gonna be perfect because I don't have a direct match. Um, when I was assembling this palette, Core hadn't yet listed what colors were going to be available in their mini set. And I didn't necessarily wanna buy a bunch of duplicates either. So the colors I have in this palette that I'm going to be testing today are, I will probably test Permanent Gamboge because I've only got like two yellows, Quinn Gold and Permanent Gamboge, and I do wanna test a yellow. We do not have the Pyro Red, so I may test Quinn Crimson. We do have though, a uh, transparent pyro orange. We also have Quinn Magenta, Dioxazine Purple, French Ultramarine. I don't have the Thalo Blue shade. I have a Danthrone Blue and a Prussian Blue. So I think I'm gonna go with the Danthrone Blue because I think it's a little bit lighter and it's a little more similar. Um, I don't have sap green. I have phthalo green blue shade. Or though, although I could do permanent green light, which is kind of a light spring green. 
and I, oh yeah, and Burnt Umber Natural. So it's not a perfect one-to-one -one comparison, but I hope we'll be able to see enough of sort of, you know, how it actually stacks up against core watercolors that have been dried from tubes. And if you guys would like to see me do the core watercolors um, directly from tubes as compared to the minis, you can let me know in the comments below, but I'm not going to do that unless you guys request it, just because I don't necessarily think it's necessary. So I'm gonna start over on this end with my permanent gamboge. I'm just gonna work my way through, and then once I'm done, I'll label everything. So I didn't really notice too many differences in terms of handling or intensity of color. Um, the From Tube reactivated very quickly. It didn't really take much time at all. In prior tests, I've noticed that these can go soupy. If you pre-activate them, they just get a little too viscous. So um, they were very quick to activate. Um, it certainly is cuter and more convenient to be using this cute little set, but I think I think the half pants in this core set are a little bit smaller than the half pant, like commonly available half pants. And these are also, these were designed for um, sort of like how Windsor and Newton designs their half pants for quick reactivation. These were probably designed along the same lines. Whereas these, I just feel, you know, half pants from tubes. So there may be long-term storage and handling issues that come up that I wouldn't be aware of today. Um, in terms of color selection, obviously I selected this palette myself and this palette was selected by Core. I noticed that the mini palette has a lot of the high chroma colors, which can make for some really vivid stuff, but some people may have difficulty handling those sort of colors. I also noticed that the red that was included does tend to, when it's, it's very, very vibrant when wet and it tends to dry muted, whereas a Quinn Crimson stays fairly vibrant even when dry. However, I mean, it's like the difference between a Cadmium Red and a Scarlet Lake, or even a, an Alizarin Crimson and a Scarlet Lake. You've got one that's a cool red and one that's a warm red. And I think with the inclusion of um, Quinn Magenta, means you can mix kind of a range of reds to suit your needs from the mini palette. Whereas from the palette I assembled, I would be mixing in the pyro orange. So I think the colors they selected with the mini set are very mixable, very blendable colors. You shouldn't have any trouble getting the colors you want if you know a little bit of color theory. Um, the Payne's Gray, Payne's Gray is typically considered a convenience color. You can mix a Payne's Gray fairly easily using a burnt umber and usually like a warmer blue or even a cooler blue, depending on what kind of Payne's Gray you're going for. But it's nice that they included it and I prefer a Payne's Gray to the inclusion of a black. I'm also glad they didn't include a white because I never use Chinese white when I watercolor. That's just my own personal preference. I, um, I find that it makes the colors I mix very chalky. Now, I did add in my green gold because it was a little more similar to the sap green that they included. And you can probably mix a sap green-esque color by mixing either um, the phthalo green blue shade with like a cooler yellow, which I don't have, or mixing um, the green gold and the phthalo blue shade. But that's something I would have to test out. Now, I did notice that my tube watercolors some of the colors have a little more granulation, like the burnt umber, whereas or like the um, ultramarine blue, whereas some of the colors have a little more granulation over in the mini palette. So that could just be a matter of preference or how finely they mill their pigments. I also swatched some of the additional colors that I have in here. When I made this palette, I tried to go with a palette I thought I could actually mix using. 
So um, I'm still missing a few colors that I would like to have and that I like to work with, but core tube watercolors are $10 up a tube depending on what series, so I am acquiring them kind of slowly. However, a big tube like this can fill a, a half pan about four times. Um, another thing is that when you sell fill half pans, as they evaporate, they're going to shrink. That's just a natural part of the process. So you may opt to refill it multiple times in order to get a nice even fill. That's not necessarily I care about, but I know some people do. Alrighty, friends, it is time for us to talk turkey, to talk numbers, and to talk comparison. So uh, the 12 half pans that come in this really cute travel set, you're not buying anything additional. It comes with the case, it comes with the pans. It's going to cost you $60 on Blick. Whereas if you were buying each tube individually, it would be, and I'm not talking about three sets because I know you can get a better deal through sets, but each tube individually to make a palette like this is gonna cost you $113.70. So if you're new to core, if you wanna play around with core, or maybe you're just, all, all of your watercolor painting is on the go. This is a fantastic little watercolor set. The colors are vibrant. They handle just like the core watercolors from tubes. You're gonna get great saturation. You're gonna get vivid mixes. Um, these are not, Core in general is not a particularly lifty brand. It doesn't really want to lift out of your watercolor paper. It's more staining. The pigments seem to be a little more finely milled. So there isn't necessarily as much granulation. So if you're looking for consistent colors that are not going to pick up as you add layers, Core could be a great option for you. This could be something that I really recommend to comic artists and illustrators. I know for many of you, the price tag seems a little bit hefty, but I promise you these are high quality watercolors and you're really gonna enjoy painting with them. Now, if you're painting in bulk, you're probably going to be better off buying the Core watercolors in tubes because you can get from three to five fills if you get the big tubes. You can get from three to five half pan fills each time. You also have the option of filling larger things. You could fill a whole pan, you can fill a bottle cap, you can fill a small, um, like a little dish with it. So if you really want flexibility, I recommend you go with the tubes. However, both are great. The colors are beautiful and great, and I uh, beautiful in both, and I can't wait to show you guys my field test. So, so thank you so much for watching my core mini comparison with dried core watercolors from Tubes. I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys, and I hope to see you again really soon. Have a great day, guys. Bye.